We like to call our journey in music a collective search for individualism. What this means is that as individuals, we're part of this collective we call La Lucha, and we seek to be distinguishable from other bands that are currently in the musical landscape in order to get, get a fan base that's loyal and we can continue to do this for a living. And in this journey as a collective, we cannot forget about our journeys as individuals because it is this unique combination of people that make up the sound that we're looking for. In the early stages of musical education, imitation plays a really big role because you start playing music by other people that has already been written, people you admire. And little by little, you start creating your own sound, your own versions of those, so those songs, and then eventually you create your own music. And you start developing your own voice. And a really important part of developing your own voice is your environment, of course, not only musically speaking, but economically, socially and culturally. That informs who you become and influences you in, in great ways. So when you bring those influences into a band, you kind of go into a similar process of learning of, through imitation, playing some covers, stuff like that, and then little by little, you start creating your own material. And all of the different influences that each unique individual brings makes up the sound, a sound that transcends the individual. The journey of La Lucha began in 2005 when we met in college at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Uh, soon after we met, we realized we had a lot in common. Alejandro on bass was born and raised in Colombia in South America. Uh, he grew up listening to heavy metal, salsa, bajanatos, cumbias, and Motown. Uh, he also played in heavy metal bands, but it wasn't until he moved to the United States, leaving his life behind to find a new life to start one here in the United States. Did he find jazz and fall passionately in love? Uh, John O'Leary on the piano. He uh, also grew up in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Uh, he too left everything behind in 1998 and came to the United States with his mother to find a new life. Um, he grew up uh, listening to the classical greats. His mother is a wonderful concert pianist and he had all the classical music surrounding his life. When we met John, he was actually a classical tuba major in college. Uh, he walked into the room Alejandro and I were playing jazz in and said, what is going on here? And I said, we're playing jazz. And he says, well, I want to do that too. And so uh, we met John at the university and began playing jazz together. I am the exotic one in the group. Um, I am Mark Feynman and I was born and raised in Clearwater, Florida, in the United States. I grew up uh, listening to all kinds of music, but I was playing a lot in punk rock bands and hard rock bands as well. And also discovered jazz in college when the three of us were put into a room playing music. And just as Alejandro said, uh, the moment we started playing together, all of those influences, all of those environments that we were born in and raised in, the music, that we had taken in from classical music, heavy metal, punk rock, all that energy and the cultures from the countries that each of us were from, they showed up in the music that we were playing. And we were learning something new about not only this improvised music we call jazz, but about each other. And we started taking those influences and throwing them in, uh, songs from the Great American Songbook, jazz tunes, but we're also taking popular music like from the 80s and 90s, and we were rearranging them for our instrumental trio. And we enjoyed uh, taking those influences and putting them into our own compositions as well. And we'd like to play one for you. This is an original tune called Pet Rock.
So part of the journey of being an artist is learning to overcome your fears. And for example, I almost didn't become a musician. And it's because choosing a life in music is kind of like that scene at, at, in Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, where Indiana has to cross this big canyon. But in order to get to the other side, he has to jump into the abyss and he has to trust that there's going to be this invisible bridge to help him get over to the other side. And for me, Mark and Alejandro have been that invisible bridge to be able to take a jump. And the three of us took that leap of faith together. We, we decided to become professional musicians and went together on this journey. But once you are a professional musician uh, or a professional artist, fear just doesn't go away. Um, a prevalent fear, something that I know the three of us have dealt with, is the fear of inadequacy. And it's so easy to look around and to find somebody your age or younger who may be uh, farther along in their career or maybe they have, uh, they have more mastery than you or more Instagram followers and whatever it may be. And you think, maybe I'm not good enough. I think the best thing that we can do as artists is not to romanticize the end result. Rather, to fall in love with the process, fall in love with the journey, fall in love with the hard work that it takes to become the best version of you, and to decide that you get to decide what success looks like for you. And it may not be what success looks like for somebody else, but that's okay. You are on your own unique journey, and we need to be patient and be in this for the long haul. And it is through overcoming our fears that we find our strength and our individualism. This last one we're going to perform, it's called Gene Drive.